<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, of course, we have a great vlog for you. Of course, we're going to have a great vlog. Actually, I have a lot of stuff planned, but I don't have a beer segment this week. So here's kind of a long story. I just don't have a beer segment this week. But you know, what are you going to do? There's no real long story behind it. The long story behind it is uh, I had a cheat day uh, or a cheat weekend, rather, this weekend when I was up in Connecticut. And uh, me and Ruby and a bunch of people, we all drank beer, but then uh, I didn't shoot any video for the said beer that we consumed. So, there you go. Now there's no uh, there's no beer segment this week, but that's okay. Maybe we can extend uh, maybe we can extend something out a little bit, or maybe we can actually cut the vlog just a touch shorter. These have been running way too long. So what I want to start off this week with is uh, what I've been vaping. So what I've been vaping maybe over the last uh, week since you last saw me in the last vlog. So what I've been vaping is uh, mostly this. Uh, it's it's that hater box that says uh, Grim Green on it, and I have a gold, that just looks cool. It's a gold dot mod atomizer with a gold dot mod drip tip. I just love the way this setup looks. I love the way it vapes. I have a dual fused Clapton in here, and I've been vaping it with Rainbow Sherbet in the dark from the Grim Colt line, and it's just delicious. This Rainbow Sherbet in the dark is basically my go-to sort of all day vape whenever you know when you have those moments and you're vaping and you're like oh, I don't really like this I don't want to vape this I don't this is weird it's this juice tastes weird this RDA is acting funny this mod is something I always I always go back to sherbet and the dot mod I love the dot mod atomizer uh, it's the new tugboat for me I have four of them currently going and I don't generally do that I used to do that a lot with the tugboats but now it's the dot mods. I just use them. I freaking use them all the time. But uh, it's been, this is one of my favorite vapes currently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's just good. It's just oh so good. Another setup I've been rocking a lot lately is the Continuous Current Manhattan V2. That's the Phenotype L with a dual fuse Clapton in there, as well as the Namber Juice Classics. Uh, caramelized banana in three milligram. We do these in 30 mil bottles now, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned that last week. But this flavor, I haven't vaped this flavor in so long. It's been so, so great. Yeah, oh nice, oh nice. It's just nice. Just a nice little vape. So yeah, that's that's basically what I've been vaping. Uh, we're gonna get to, oh, and this. Let's throw this in there as well. This is uh, my Black Batman swoop with the newer updater black version of the monster v3 um i believe i have what juice is even in here boilermaker this is boilermaker juice this is rivet boilermaker rivet is in here and i was rocking a chimney build for the longest time and it was working fine and wicking great i just I was like, eh, I don't really like this chimney build for some reason. So I switched it back to a traditional horizontal style. I did like eight, nine wraps of 26 gauge Canthal around a little, very small one and a half millimeter uh, screwdriver head. Um, came out to 0 0.6 ohms and I have it at 33 watts. It's been, uh, this has been a really great vape as well. Now, a lot of people keep asking me about the Monster V3, and it's not a cloud chasing tank. It does produce some nice amounts of vapor, but it's definitely not a cloud chasing tank. Even with the Chuff, you know, uh, upgrade kit that you can get for it, it's still not really like a cloud chasing tank. It's very much more of a flavor tank. I tend to take this with me um, when I leave the house or when I go out to dinner. I just like it. It's a little bit more mellow of a vape. I can rock it at higher ohms, lower wattages, and still have a, still have a very nice vape. So yeah, that's what I've been vaping. So this last weekend, we went to Connecticut, had a great old time up there. It was, it was really fun. It was a Safada fundraiser. There was a lot of raffling going on. Met a whole ton of cool people. They had a cloud comp up there as well. But the mods I took with me, both crapped out on me when I was up there and I was essentially modless so I took my Zurich X box 
and it was vaping great that first night and then the next day the button started getting all weird like I had dropped it or something and you know we were drinking there's a good chance I could have dropped this mod and it hit right on that button but the, I was like it felt you know when you when you're when you have when you use a mod and you feel how it works just repeatedly or when you're driving your car you can just tell there's just something wrong you're like something feels wrong. I started using it. I'm like, something feels wrong on this. The button is sticky and I look at it and it's like, and it's like catching on one side. And I'm like, what did I do? Did this get, I mean, it was in my carry on. I don't know if it got smashed when I was flying it. I don't know if I dropped it. I don't know what I did to that mod, but the button was sticking and not working anymore. And so I was like, well, I, thankfully I brought a backup, which I wasn't going to do, but thankfully I did bring a backup. I brought the Stormtrooper mod, that uh, the wooden mod from Vapeworks, right? Was vaping on that, was vaping on that. Suddenly I'm pressing the button, nothing's happening. I'm like, well, maybe my batteries are dead. So I pop out the batteries, I throw some new batteries in there. No, I'm like, huh, man, maybe it's the RDA. Maybe something's more funky's going on. So I put a new RDA in there, put new batteries in there. Nothing, nothing. So I try my last, my third RDA I brought with me, threw it in there, new batteries nothing nothing and I'm like great right now I am essentially modless I have no mod I have no vape up here in Connecticut but thankfully thankfully someone came through for me and uh, he handed me off his little device oh shoot I didn't screen capture it I, th I really thought I screen captured this oh yeah I did there it is um, uh, a fella from All About the Vapors uh, which is a shop up there in the Connecticut area I was like frazzled. I'm like, bah, I don't have a mod. And he's like, oh, well, I have this. And I'm like, well, I'm, dude, I'm not going to take your mod. He's like, no, I just, I just make these. I brought a bunch with me. He's like, I just make these. So he handed me off his little Hammond box mod. It's blue. It's got an A. I apologize. I don't remember your name, dude. I know that you work at All About the Vapors, but I don't remember your name. Long hair, goatee, horror t-shirt on. Super nice guy. I talked with him for a while. And so I'm like, you're literally saving my life right now. And all it is, is a Hammond box with a sled, parallel, unregulated, and it's got a MOSFET right there that I can see. So I put it all together. I threw my RDA on there. It's got a really weird, wonky super flat squishy button that I've never seen before but I didn't even care I would have vaped a cow turd at that time I didn't even care I was like I just want a mod that's gonna get me through this weekend thankfully thankfully mr. all about the vapor came through gave me a mod he's like no here just use it and so I was using it at the event and I you know was like I'm gonna give this guy back his mod no he I just hung on to it he's like hang on to it just use it while you're here and I'm like dude you're literally saving my life right now like thank you so much so yeah all weekend I rocked this really simple dual parallel unregulated 18650 uh, mod spring loaded 510 it worked with all my atomizers and I could not uh, I could not have been more thankful I was just uh, I was just stoked to have I was just stoked to have something to vape so yeah like I said had a great time up in Connecticut had great friendship times with Ruby Roo she's always I mean she's always always awesome to hang out with and we had like I said really good bonding sort of friendship times and I got to see Kevin again uh, from VP live who I haven't seen in a number of years and I got to go visit the uh, the vapor venue store up there in Connecticut that CJ opened and it's uh it's very cool I had a, I had a really really great time up there um so moving forward i do have my vlog notes out already oh i'm getting a new camera yes yes i am finally finally going to be buying a new camera i've been using the same webcam for my videos for the last like four years easily maybe a little bit longer but it's been at least four years and I'm just, I'm over the whole webcam software crashing on me and stuff like that. It's been, it's been a bit of a hassle lately. So I'm going to buy a brand new, well, brand new, brand new to me anyway, uh, camera. So I'm going to get this camera and I'm going to be fiddling with it and I'm going to try to pick a good because I can't set it up exactly where I have this camera right here. Like I can't put it right there but I might be setting it off to the side, and so we might be changing angles a little bit. I might put it off to this side, and we might be changing angles a little bit. I might put it in front of my monitor, and then 
back up a little bit so we still have a similar view. I might get a couch back here. I'm not sure. So hopefully things are going to be changing, but things are going to be changing for the better. Uh, I hope I my hope is that my videos will look and sound better than they ever have ever. It just makes the vlog that much more uh, enjoyable to watch. So I'm very excited. That should be uh, getting implemented hopefully within the next two weeks or so. Um, I don't know. I need to fiddle with it. I've never had like a fancy DSLR style camera so I know there's going to be a lot of buttons and fiddly shit to, to dial in and, and make it look all all nice and good and sound all uh, all nice and good but uh, but yeah it's a thing and like I said hopefully it's going to be getting implemented within the next uh, within the next two weeks or so a fellow named Anthony moving forward from that a fellow named Anthony emailed me about uh, EU about the EU UK advocacy that's happening and so um, no. Why? It was not Anthony. It was James. Why did I write Anthony? Why on earth did I write Anthony? Okay, his name's not Anthony. His name is James. Why, why am I weird? So James wrote to me and said, uh, as you know, the UK is the first country to support the use of electronic cigarettes, something I'm very proud of. However, this doesn't mean that we are in the clear over the pond. The European Com Commission has basically fucked us vapors over. So we have that good news where the UK was embracing the use of electronic cigarettes. Article 20 of the TPD, effective January 2016, will impose ridiculous and dubbed mo most poorly thought out regulation of electronic cigarettes. And he has an attachment here that I will show you in one moment. This will eradicate many small businesses, which could possibly lead to an economic decline in this already fragile recovery period during the general con affecting general consumers and vapors. I started a petition uh, on our government petition service appealing to, appealing to them. It currently holds about 1,800 signatures and needs 10,000 for a government response and 100,000 for government action. I'm only 18 years old. I was smoking 10 cigarettes a day for almost two years. I quit five months ago and I find myself better off in a mental and physical health. I helped many of my friends quit smoking now too and although I have received received ample thanks from them it's the help that vaping provides uh that they should be grateful for as it is for all quitters please promote uh, my petition in your next vlog if you could oh and if you get your hands on any adam's broadside ale give it a try they're award-winning brewery near me i will have to check that out but yeah he sent me over this graphic and i'm going to link in the description to the petition that you can sign if you're in the uk eu area but basically article 20 of the tpd how will it affect me no bottles over 10 mils, no bottles, this, nope, this is a 30 mil bottle, no bottles over 10 mils, less choice of e-liquids. We would only be allowed to provide e-liquid in 10 mil bottles. Significant testing costs will reduce the flavor ranges available and there will be no nicotine strengths higher than 20 milligram, uh, which yes, that is, some of us might say, well, I vape three, I vape six, I vape zero, that's fine. Smokers vape higher nicotine levels. When I was transitioning from smoking, I needed 24 milligram to vape. That's just what I needed. So limiting that and saying that, you know, you can't vape more than 20 milligram, that is actually harmful to smokers, believe it or not. No tanks over two mils. So that means even the Goblin Mini would be way too big and no refillable tanks. So you have to have pre-packaged, pre-filled tanks. They can't be refillable and they can't be over two mils. The TPD is incredibly restrictive and at the same time unclear. At present, it appears that most refillable devices will not achieve pre-market approval and it looks like tanks will have a maximum capacity of two mils. No nicotine above 20 milligram, which we already touched on, and no advertising. There will be a complete ban on advertising, including print, transmitted, and sponsorship media. This will drastically affect the forms of vape radio and vape TV. Essentially, this is a gagging order on all vaping information and education. You know what that means? That translates. That's not just no advertising on TV or no billboards. That's no social media. That's no Facebook. That's no Instagram. As a liquid vendor, you couldn't have an Instagram and 
promote your products as a less harmful alternative. You would not be able to do that. So he finally says, join us in saying no to Article 20 of the ta Tobacco Product Directive. So like I said, I'm gonna link in the description to the petition. Feel free to sign it. Feel free to uh, steal this picture. Uh, I'll upload it on Imgur or something like that and you can download it and share it around to whomever you'd like up there uh, in the UK as well as all your vapor friends and stuff like that. Um, so one more thing I have, sponsor a smoker. So I'm sure that some of you guys, if not all of you guys, are familiar with uh, Vape Stars, Jonathan Vape Stars Thomas. He's a good guy. He's he's just a good guy. And he and I call him Sven, but uh, I know his name's not Sven. I know his name's not John Denver either. They have started this, uh, this sponsor a smoker campaign, hashtag sponsor a smoker. And basically what it is, is you, the vapors and the vape shops are actually soliciting smokers and sponsoring them and not just saying, hey, come here and buy this mod. It's actually like, here, have this mod, have some juice, see if this works for you. Okay, sponsoring a smoker. It's a really good idea. So JT was on ClickBang with Russ uh, last night or two nights ago. I didn't get to listen. Either way, I didn't get to listen. I'm gonna go back and listen to that show. But he talks about the sponsor, a smoker on there. And there's actually a great little quote from Dimitri on this Facebook as well. It says, uh, a cigarette is the only consumer product which when used as directed kills its consumer. Hashtag quit smoking. I think that's uh, I think that's really well said. And people are sharing their sponsor uh, smoker stories as far as, hey, I met this person and she was a smoker and so I gave her this kit and she really really liked it and she's down to you know one cigarette a night and then she hopes to quit soon and then that's that's our success story. I, we sponsored a smoker. Every sponsor a smoker counts. There's this mentality of you have to reach as many people as possible. And that's not, that's, that's horseshit. If you help one person, if you help one smoker, then that person is more likely to help another smoker. And it just spreads. It just spreads around. Um, this isn't anything that I'm publicizing or documenting in any capacity. Uh, my sponsor of Smoker is my new barber. Um, can't remember his name though because I'm an asshole. But uh, I have a new barber and he's a great guy and he's a smoker. He's a barber. Uh, he, we, we listen to the very you know similar genres of music as far as like clutch and the helicopters and the super suckers and he's just a really cool dude and he drinks beer and every time I go get my hair cut we're always talking about shit and life and, and where we lived and all this stuff and it came up last time that he he's a smoker he's like yeah I'm a smoker and this that and the other and he's like I'm you know I'd love to quit but he's like I can get cigarettes for so cheap that you know there's almost no reason for me to quit like I'm just gonna I just like smoking so much and I said you know what I have stuff I will bring you at my next my next barber appointment I will bring you stuff so I got some uh, 12 milligram tobacco juices for him uh, I'm gonna get him an ego one kit with some replacement coils and just here I'm gonna show him how to use it and be like just give this a shot when you want to have a cigarette try some vapor if you still want to have a cigarette then have a cigarette you know what I mean don't force yourself to vape you. I want you to enjoy it. So if he doesn't like the tobacco flavors, cause he's just like a Marlboro red smoker. So if he doesn't enjoy the tobacco flavors, we're gonna try some other flavors. And I really want I really want this guy to, to get into vaping just to use it to get away from cigarettes because you know what, he's a cool dude. And I think that everybody deserves to have a good vaping experience, vapors and smokers alike. So yeah, huge shout out to, uh, to John Denver and uh, Jonathan Vape Stars Thomas for getting this sponsor a smoker organization off the ground. I'm going to link in the description to their Facebook page, community organization, where you can get involved if you uh, if you desire. So last thing I want to do, and I'm going to go into my reading stance over here because we got shout outs coming next because I got no beer for you, unfortunately. But someone named Simon sent me this really great question, just a really 
interesting question that I would like to open for discussion here on the YouTube. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this. I I know how I I know how I feel about this. I'd be interested to see what the community, what my viewers and subscribers feel about this. So Simon writes to me and says, hey Nick, I, I just have a question for you. I've been a vapor for around two years and I was never really addicted to analog cigarettes, but I really, really liked smoking and the act of smoking was very relaxing and appealing to me. I started vaping so that I would not smoke cigarettes. I'm vaping zero nicotine juice and I have been since I started. It's great, I love it, and I will always be vaping. Recently I got a new roommate that I have been friends with since I was eight and he took a liking to my huge mod collection and he has started vaping zero nicotine juice as well. Interesting, right? Everything has been going fine and dandy until recently we have both noticed that a lot of other vapors at the local vape shops, AKA people I hang out with a lot, have been hating on us hard for vaping zero nick juice. I was wondering if this is a normal thing or if there's something wrong with me vaping zero milligram nicotine juice. I'm not against nicotine and I will try some if someone asks me. It's not that I'm afraid of getting addicted to nicotine, it's just that it's an uncomfortable vape because of the fighting throat of fighting the throat hit. It gets to the point where my friend is saying he doesn't want to vape anymore because he's so sick of the drama. What should I do? What should we do? Please help me. Thank you. Sorry for the long email, and I'm sorry if this was hard to understand. I'm trying to make my best things clear. And I said, Simon, people are just dicks sometimes. In my eyes, if you, I said, in my eyes, you chose vaping over smoking, and that is a good decision. If someone gives you shit about it, just ask them, should I go smoke a carton of cigarettes first? Then would it be okay for me to vape? I would actually like to bring this question up in one of my vlog videos, if you don't mind. Simon writes back and says, thank you for the reply. It would be nice to find out if this is a problem that a lot of other people have, where it's almost like you're not cool unless you were a smoker, or it's almost like you are not cool unless you're using three milligram nicotine. There is a shop that I asked for them to order juice and pushed it and pushed it and they finally got it in and they never ordered zero nick for me. It just makes me feel really uncomfortable. It makes me feel really unaccepted into the community and I think that's wrong. We should be helping people into this whether they want to vape at zero or 24. Sorry, I'm starting a little rant. Thank you for your time and your reply. Uh, we watch your videos, your vlogs on SoundCloud. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you, Simon, thank you to your roommate. But I think this is a very interesting question. If there's a person, if there's a human, and their normal path would have been, I'm gonna start smoking, at a youngish age, if you're 15 or 16, or if you're in seventh grade like I was, I'm gonna start smoking at a younger-ish age, right? And then I'm going to eventually get to vaping. Like that's their path. They don't know it, but that's their path. You go from you know, non-smoker to smoker to vapor. That's what seems to be the acceptable path. Now, if this person who is predisposed to want to smoke cigarettes, to desire to smoke cigarettes, which is the way I was. I wanted to be a smoker and I would go back and forth from cigarettes to cigars and I just loved it. I liked the culture of it. I liked breathing in smoke and letting it roll out of your mouth and it, I wanted to do it. I wanted to be a smoker. But if we can get someone to completely skip the cigarette portion, and then go straight to vaping and vape zero nick juice, I personally feel like that could be a really great thing. I don't think we should be, you know, uh, ostracizing people who never smoked cigarettes in order for them to be a real vapor because chances are they would have smoked cigarettes anyway and then started vaping. Why not skip the harmful cigarette smoke and just let them vape. And these guys are even vaping at zero nicotine juice. They were gonna smoke. They were going to smoke cigarettes, but now they're not and they are just vaping zero nicotine juice. 
Let me know what you think. I mean, honestly, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be very interested. I'd be very interested to see what people think because I personally think, like I said, I think this is a good thing. I think skipping the cigarettes portion of it and just doing vaping, I think that's a really good thing. And, it, you know, I think it's ridiculous that we would go, oh, you were never a smoker? Oh, well, then pff, that's dumb. Why are you even here? Why are you even vaping? Don't vape. This person wants to vape. And if you say, no, you can't vape, no, you can't even vape zero nicotine juice, or we ostracize them, or we, or we make fun of them, then they're going to go smoke cigarettes. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Why, why would we push people towards cigarettes? Why would we say, you should be a smoker first? Why would we, why would we even entertain the idea of making someone smoke cigarettes first before they become a vapor? Anyway, I just thought that was really interesting. Simon, I hope everything gets sorted out with you and your, and your vape shops and everything like that. And since I don't have any beer right now, what we're going to do is move straight over to shout out time. It is shout out time. All right, yeehaw. Well, let's get to some uh, let's get to some shout outs here. This one goes way back. This one goes back into July, and I feel like a dick for just not just getting to it just now. But Hunter, Hunter writes to me and says, "Hello, Nick. I was hope I, I was hoping I could possibly get a shout out for my beautiful and amazing in every way fiance of three years. Our anniversary will be coming up." on July 4th, and I'm trying very, very hard to get my sweet Tiffany to quit smoking, as I have for the past six months now, but buying her, uh, by buying her a pink e-leaf eye stick 50 watt and a sub tank as an anniversary gift, absolutely, I love your channel, and I look up to you a lot, I was just, I would just love nothing more than to get my beautiful fiance a shout out for our very special anniversary and I say all of this while watching your current vlog but either way thank you so much uh, I hope to hear a shout out in an upcoming vlog I watch them all so I will certainly be listening hope you're listening now Hunter other than that have a good day and thanks for all you do absolutely you know Hunter I apologize the number the sheer number of shout out requests I get is a little bit on the ridiculous side and I apologize for just getting this to now but Hunter and absolutely Tiffany, consider yourselves shouted out. Hope that pink e-leaf eye stick 50 watt with a sub tank was able, able to help you out, Tiffany. It sounds like Hunter really loves you, really thinks you're beautiful and amazing, and obviously really wants you to get off the uh, to get off of the cigarettes. So absolutely, shout outs to you, uh, Hunter and Tiffany. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Got another shout out here. Which one is this? Uh, oh, this comes to me from France. Uh, Hi, Nick. My name is Francois, so I am French. <laughs> so I apologize if I'm not expressing my feeling the right way. You're doing fine, Francois. You're doing just fine. I just want to give you a shout out because nearly two years ago, I quit smoking. I was a pack and a half a day smoker per day. Pack and a half a day. That's a lot of cigarettes. Uh, you gave me info on vaping gear, and it helps me a lot. Now I am an e-cig brick and mortar shop owner in my small town. I'm always watching your reviews and of course your vlog. I'm always starting to watch your vlog on Sundays uh, on my Saturday lunch in my shop. Every time I start your vlog, I never end to watch it because a lot of, us, a lot of customers come and buy vape stuff. Freaking customers getting in the way of the vlog. You are my good luck guy. I wish I could hug you one day and thank you. Yes, of course, of course we can hug one day. Uh, so thank you, Nick. I love your spirit, uh, even though I can't listen to metal music. <laughs> By the way, if you could shout out my two customers, Marco and Jean Philippe, who are now who are now more than two customers, but two of my best friends. Uh, keep doing things like you do, and always let's keep on vaping. Um, huge shout out and kisses from France. We do kiss all the people we love in France. You know what, Francois? Absolutely. Consider yourself shouted out. Congratulations on opening your own store. Marco and Jean, Jean-Philippe, who are now your best friends, who were once customers. I mean, that's just uh, that's just wonderful. So yeah, hug me, kiss me. I'm not sure when, uh, when I'll ever get to France. I'm going to be in Ireland. That's not close to France. I don't think it is, but I don't geography. So uh, it could be. But, uh, but yeah, consider yourself shouted out, guys. 
Got another shout out here, uh, William. William writes to me and says, hey Nick, my name is William and I'm from Anchorage, Alaska and my Vapoversary is coming up in October. I have been watching your vids since then and I would love it if you could shout out my wife, Sylvia, because she has probably never smoked a cigarette in her life, but has she has never smoked a cigarette in her life, but has been nothing but supportive for me and I love her for it and thank God for her every day. Uh, I wake up next to such a beautiful person. She has met me when I was a homeless alcoholic, and it's because of her I am the sober man I am today. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Uh, William, consider yourself shouted out. Sylvia, absolutely consider yourself shouted out. And I've said this before, and I will say it again. I love, I love, love when there is a supportive you know, spouse, significant other, girlfriend, man friend, lady friend, whatever you have, who are not a smoker and not a vapor, but they are still supportive of you making that transition into vaping. That just uh, that just warms my heart, gives me all the feels. So absolutely, William, Sylvia, consider yourselves. Shout it out. One more, uh, one more. That's all I have planned for shout outs. This is a five minute segment. Okay, well. Maybe this is just gonna be a short vlog. I mean, maybe that's that's the way it's gonna go. Uh, Baxter. Baxter. <laughs> that just makes me think of Anchorman. Baxter writes to me and says, Oh, his name's not even Baxter. Guy, I'm an idiot. What am I do? Why am I so bad with names? Writes to me and says, Hey, Nick, uh, my name is Jake. I absolutely love your videos. You have given me so much good information. I can't thank you enough. The reason I'm sending this email is because I'm going into the Navy on October 17th. I would love it if my favorite YouTuber and protector of my vaping rights could give the shop I go to me and my girlfriend Sarah a shout out the shop is called surf city vapors in huntington beach california oh and before i forget i am a potter on instagram my page is my page is called chub pottery and i have made you a vase if you would like it i would be happy to send it to you all right have a good day keep on vaping uh that's i mean that obviously yeah i I want a vase. I want a vase. I don't know how you're going to send it to me, Jake. Uh, I want a vase that you made. Chub Pottery. Let's go over to, let's let's check out this fella's Instagram right here. I'm going to link to it in the description in case you're interested in following a, uh, in following a potter, Chub Pottery on, uh, on Instagram. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, those are kind of cool. Dude, those are really cool. That one's boss. Oh, that one's super cool. You have a nice little Instagram feed there, sir, and I like you. I like Chub Pottery. I'm going to follow you, and uh, absolutely. Can, well, I mean, obviously, thank you for your service. You're going into the Navy. That's a huge adventure uh, for for you, but you, Surf City Vapors in Huntington Beach, California, and your girlfriend, Sarah, are all officially shouted out. Uh, hit me back, Jake, and we'll talk about an exchange we can do for the vase because you know what? If you made me a vase... I want a vase. I can keep it right here and fill it with gardenias or something like that. But absolutely. Thank you so much. Consider yourself shouted out. Do I have time to do another shout out? Sure. Why not? It's just unplanned unplanned shout out. Taylor. Taylor writes to me and says, hey Nick, my name is Taylor and I just wanted to tell you my story with vaping. I smoked for eight years before I switched to vaping. I was 13. 13. By the time I quit, I was a pack-a-day smoker, uh, and I felt that vaping saved my life at still such a young age. I've been vaping for about 10 months, and my vaporversary is coming up, and so is my birthday in October. I'll be 21. I finally get to try some of those awesome beers you talk about in your videos. I'm sorry, Taylor. There's no beer this week. I wanted to ask for a shout-out for my girlfriend, Alex. She is the one that got me into vaping originally 10 months ago, and I haven't gone back since. She was also a pack-a-day smoker for many, many years. Started with a Nautilus Mini and a Spinner version 2. And uh, and I'm all about the clouds now. <laughs> Alex and I rebuild RDAs together and just enjoy vaping together. She's a wonderful woman and she deserves a shout out. Thank you for taking the time in your busy day to read this. Love your videos. Hope for many more from you. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely. Taylor, Alex, consider yourselves both shouted out even more than I love a supportive significant other that doesn't vape or smoke I love supportive significant others that both vape there's some it's it's dumb I know it's dumb it's silly but there's 
when you have something that that in common with someone, you're both vapors. You both have had your lives changed by these devices and these atomizers. When you have that bond, I think it's uh, I think it's great. There's something magical that happens, and maybe I'm getting a little gushy and romantic, but absolutely, I think it's a uh, I think it's a great connection. I think it's great to connect over uh, to connect over vaping. So that's what I got. Let's let's wrap up these shout outs for this week. We didn't have a beer segment, but we did already talk about a lot of stuff, including the sponsor of Smoker, the EU vaping legislation, vaping zero nick juice, and we did some shout outs. So now, now what I have to get to is some first impressions. All right, first impressions time. So this first first impression, I believe I'm gonna upload as a separate video so people can check it out, possibly without watching the entire vlog. But what I wanna talk about first, the lava box from VolcanoEcigs.com. I believe it's VolcanoEcigs.com. It is, it's VolcanoEcigs.com. So they have created a 200 watt box and they, they sent along a long time ago that lava tube version three that was a big tube. It was like a 40 watt tube. It was huge. It was like a nightstick. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. then thankfully they moved on to make a DNA 200 box. And my first impressions of this DNA 200 box is that it's incredibly, oh, incredibly comfortable to hold. It's got a spring loaded. 510 connection on top. Let me grab this tank off of here. Spring loaded 510 on top. You can kind of see some airflow slots put into there just like that. Maybe if you're using, you know, an old Cardo tank or something like that, you'll still have airflow. They don't bother me. And when you touch them, you can barely feel them because it's anodized after they cut those slots into there. On the front is the uh, the DNA 200 display, and it's kind of behind a very slightly smoky sort of window. So the DNA display isn't super bright. You can see on the Vapor Shark, it's much much brighter than it is on the uh, on the Vapor Shark. Or the Vapor Shark is much much brighter than it is on the Lava Box DNA 200. It's just it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit smoky so that it kind of, it's like looking at it through sunglasses or something like that. Up and down bottoms, up and down buttons right here and they're soft and squishy. And then there's the fire button right here at the top which is also sort of soft and squishy. I guess it's a, a very, very slight click. Now this has LiPo batteries on the inside so you have to charge it with the USB right there. You can also use that USB to interface with your eScribe software. In fact, when I lock it, see if you can see what that says. Yeah, it says clouds, bro. Clouds, bro. That's when it's locked. Sorry, clouds, bro. It's locked. Clouds, bro. In fact, I have it. I've changed a bunch of the graphics on here, and that's one of the things that's great about that eScribe software. So I have it set to one watt right now for some reason. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put this tank back on here. This is the Ohm Mega tank. It's been working actually actually very very well so i have it set to one watt i have the power locked <laughs> i don't know how that happened so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just crank up the wattage to where it was before i believe i have this at about 48 watts i think that's what i was rocking this tank at now it's way too high we're, we're past 100 watts it's one thing that the dna goes really 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 fast when you hold it down like it starts off slow and then gets really fast and then just goes poof, just starts blazing fast. So we're going to get this we're going to get this back down to my acceptable wattage level that I that I desire to be rocking it at. Oh, come on. No, now we're in the 30s. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay, finally I got it to 45 watts. It's a 0.35 ohm dual coil in here. Uh, it's been it's been a great vape. One thing that I really like about this lava box is the way it feels in my hand. It's rounded all the way around. It looks, it's squared off, but it's actually rounded. Like it's a square, square, square angle like that, but it feels rounded in your hand. It's like the perfect width and the perfect height just to fit in my hand, and it feels so nice. Now this back here, this is like a soft, silicone. You can kind of see the difference there between the anodized aluminum and then this more, more softer silicone sort of sheath on there. Now those are going to come in different colors. There's a black one, which I have, but I believe they're going to do red, white, and blue as well. So I would love this with a white
white. I would love this with all of them. Fuck it. I want all I want all of the lava tube silicone sheath colors. Red, because I have red drip tips. White, because I have a white anarchist cap. And that would look, oh, that would just look so cool. It doesn't feel super substantial. It feels eh, very slightly thin. Very slightly plasticky. Maybe like a like an older-ish cell phone. It doesn't quite doesn't quite feel like a piece of super high quality technology, but it does feel very nice. I mean, it feels durable enough that I could use this and I would feel comfortable using this and throwing it in my backpack or just throwing it in my pocket and walking around with it. It does feel very, very nice. And it's a DNA 200. It does everything that a DNA 200 should do. What they list on the site is different. And this is something I've noticed with DNA 200 devices is it says uh, featuring temperature control, 200 watts, ma watts max output, internal lithium polymer battery. So a LiPo battery, upgradable firmware, cell by cell monitoring, and an integrated A1 balance charger. So LiPos need to be charged in a different way. And the 44 does this as well. They have a balance charger integrated into it so that you have the ability to just plug it in via USB and let it charge your battery. There's no balancing out of LiPo cells. They don't list the milliamp hour of it. But I've noticed that there's a lot of DNA 200 devices that don't list the milliamp hour of it. In fact, if you go over to the lit up custom e-cigs, that 44, the, you know, that big giant one that's charging over there, he doesn't say milliamp hour of the lipo battery. He says 22.2 watt hour high drain lipo batteries, which I think is interesting. Uh, evidently, this is only a 900 milliamp hour, but I'm at 70%, so I got this yesterday, charged it all the way up to 100%, and you can change in the eScribe software. I change all my DNA 200s so that I can see the percentage of battery that's left. Charged it all the way up to 100%, used it all last night, went out, went to the bar, went and had dinner, used it all night, and I've been using it all day today, and I'm down to 70%. Now, I'm only rocking this at 45 watts, but, there's something about these lipos where it may only say 900 milliamp hour or 900 ma, but I feel like I'm getting a nice long battery life from it. I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. And of course, like I said, it's all, you know, you can use it with the eScribe software and it's it's great. I like the eScribe software for changing the graphics. Additionally, you can use it to set your wattage, set your voltage, run battery diagnostics, run atomizer diagnostics. It's actually a really great software. I'm not gonna go super deep into it when I start doing the DNA 200 full reviews because I know, you know who's gonna do that? Phil's gonna do that. He's gonna upload two three hour long videos and tell you everything you need to know about the DNA 200 and the eScribe software. I'm gonna go in from more of a consumer point of view. I'm gonna give you some, some little details, show you how to put Batman on your screen instead of anything else. So yeah, grippy finish, it's silicone, it's soft. These come in different colors. Uh, the lava box, it's just, I. Since the second I got it, I want to use this. <laughs> I want to put everything that I have. I'm like, oh, let's put that tank on there and use it. Let's put this atomizer on there and use it. I've just, I've just been swept off my feet. I think it's, I think it's super cool. Obviously, like all of my first impressions that I do, yeah, I'm gonna spend a lot more time with this lava box. I'm gonna try some drop tests with it. I'm interested to see how durable this plastic screen over the DNA screen is. If it's easily scratchable, it's been holding up just fine now. It's cool, man. It's super cool. These aren't quite for sale yet. They're not going on for sale until October, the week of October 5th, but the MSRP on them, vape budget hands, 169 bucks. That's it. There's mech mods that are more expensive than that. 169 bucks, 169 bucks will get you a lava box. I would highly recommend at least 
going over and checking it out and seeing if it's something that uh, seeing if it's something that you're interested in. I think uh, Volcano did a did a bang up job with this so far. Obviously, yeah, more time is needed, but so far Volcano's done a bang up job. And you know what? I've always liked Volcano. They've been around since the beginning. They've been around the the second ever national vape meet in St. Louis Vape Fest Two. Volcano was there. This is back in 2010. Volcano was there, and they've been releasing products ever since. And uh, they jumped on board and finally did a sweet DNA 200 box. I've been having a great time with it. I've been having a great time with it. It is what it is. That's my first impressions. Uh, that's my first impressions of the lava box. So obviously, yeah, much more time is needed to uh, much more time is needed to be spent with that one. So moving forward, I wanted to do a quick update on the Cephanofer. <laughs> I, the, the atomizer that I can't pronounce, that I didn't have a build on it last week, and now I do have a build on it, but it's called the Siphonoffer. The Siphonoffer. The, I'm going to call it the Siphonoffer. 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 I did eventually get a build in there. All I did was two 6 wrap 24 gauge two six wrap 24 gauge coils in here around a one and a half millimeter screwdriver because that deck is just so so tiny but it works i mean it's vaping those are vapors that are happening right there i wicked it like the m turk method but i think i might need just a bit more wick in there i feel like i'm i feel like i need more wick in there so the weird thing about this is I finally got a build in there. It took me a hot minute, but I did get a build in there. I followed their tutorial on the website, and when you're putting in your leads, the lead that's going through the middle post, because the holes are angled out, you have to just take some pliers and just crimp it, just bend it over so that you can go, and it'll go in one and out the other. You know what I mean? In one, out the other, and then you can put your negative lead through and get it all fiddle and fiddle with it. But you have to, the positive leads, you have to like bend them so they hook. So when you're putting it in, they can, they can hook through. You reverse thread on the rest of the RDA. So this gets reverse threaded on there. And if you go too far, you're going to start taking off your RDA. So you just want it to be... Uh, uh, just snug, just like that. Haven't had any leaking issues doing that. And then this top part goes down in there. And you can't put too much wick or too big of coils in there because you have this tiny little chamber to work with. So that goes in there, just like that. And you're all set and you're ready to go. And I don't have any juice for this. I just drip through the drip tip with this atomizer because otherwise you're either unscrewing the body of it or you're unscrewing the center chamber out of it in order to drip, which is fine if that's what you want to do. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to put some, some juice on the coils and the wicks. And then I'm going to screw this back down in here, just like that, just like that. So yeah, so now we have a completed Cephonophore, Cephonophore RDA. The airflow on this thing is super weird, man. It's just weird. I'm used to airflow that's either like Aeolus top down or traditional, like I've been rocking the dot mods like crazy, in and up. And I know how that feels. I know the warmth and the airflow that I'll get. This has a slightly turbulent airflow. It goes in from the top and then through these heat sink fins and then in through these tiny holes and then up into your mouth. So it's kind of this strange journey that the air goes on. For some reason, the first like hour that I was using this, I just kept coughing and I couldn't figure out why and I think it's due to the airflow. I've got a little bit more acclimated to it now. The flavor is very, very nice. This isn't a cloud chasing tank by any, or cloud chasing RDA by any stretch, but it's a nice little flavor RDA with a weird, weird airflow. Okay, that time was actually, that time was actually really, really nice. I'm surprised. Really, really good flavor. Nice big performance. Loud. It has a loud airflow. Listen. Compare that to it's like the dot mod. See, the dot mod basically sounds silent. Cephanofer. It's just, 
loud. It's, it's a loud, loud airflow, but I'm getting good flavor and I'm getting decent performance. I just built tiny little coils and then tiny little wicks that come down and touch the deck and that's it. Don't pack it full of cotton. Don't build giant coils in there because they're going to touch the housing. You have to build tiny coils, tiny coils. <coughs> See? Every time. So yeah, obviously, little update on that. I need to spend much more time with it, <laughs> much more time with it. So moving forward, I'm going to move to another RDA. So this RDA just came in from Vapor Shark, and this is the Vortis, the Vortice RDA. It is a weird, weird RDA, man. If I thought that had weird airflow, this has stupid weird airflow. It's got these fins. It's got fins in it. Can you see these fins in the airflow slots? There's like these weird fins. And then when you pop this off, you have all these like razor sharp fins that are going throughout it. And they give you a little, uh, a little safety pad, right? They give you a little safety pad. And this is traditionally threaded on here. So you take, look, little Vortis blade remover. So you grip the bottom where it's knurled and then you use this to unscrew those fins. And once you get it started, you can kind of take them off without worrying about cutting your fingers open, but it's regularly threaded on there. That's just the build I have going on there. In fact, I'm gonna cut some of that cotton out. I have a little too much cotton in there. It vapes the cotton dry. It just does, and I don't know if that's due to the airflow or something, but it vapes, it vapes the cotton completely dry. Small deck, kind of like that Cephanofer. Small deck, small coils, little bits of wick in there. So you build your deck, it's a two post design, which is great. I think I did a, yeah, I did an 11 wrap 24 gauge on each side because it's a two post. So I wanted my coil to span the distance of the posts. Then I wicked it. In fact, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna pause for one second and cut some of this wick out of here. I feel like that's too much wick in there. So yeah, that's, I took so much wick out of there. Look how much wick I took out of there. Oh, well now that's lost in my keyboard forever. Just wick in the keyboard, that's what you want. So yeah, I took a bunch of wick out of there. I'm gonna screw this, bleh, I'm gonna screw this turbine blade chamber back on. And it's regularly threaded, it's not reverse threaded. So you screw it down like you would the RDA to your atomizer. Just gonna pop that on there. And then I've been popping this off to drip. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've been popping this off to drip and there's four huge airflow slots there and it comes with another one that only has two airflow slots, but you can't ever completely shut the airflow down so it would be like a mouth to lung, like you're always doing lung hits with this RDA. I like this one just because it has the most airflow, four big giant slots and it honestly doesn't matter at all how you take this off and put it down on there. So I've been popping this off and juicing it up before I vape it. Additionally, it also comes with two different style chuff style caps, and this is the, the shorter one, and I put a mini dot mod drip tip in there, and it also comes with one that is wider around. It's more like an actual chuff cap, but I liked the way that looked. I popped that on there and put it all together, and I was like, wow, that just looks cool. So I've got this all juiced. Came out to 0.23 ohms, I have it at 82. 82.9 watts, why don't I just do 83 watts? Why do I do that? Nice performance, nice airflow, nice smooth, even airflow. And it's because the airflow is coming in from four directions and it's going around these like these turbines and it's swirling up into your mouth. I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's any actual science or anything involved in here. It's been a really great vape. Um, when I packed it full of cotton, when I put too much cotton in there, I would just end up getting a lot of juice in my mouth. And I'm like, why am I getting so much juice in my mouth? I don't like this. I'm getting so much juice in my mouth. I cut a bunch of the cotton out improved it tenfold. I got so much less juice in my mouth. And now that I've cut the cotton down even more, I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting literally no juice in my mouth. 
great. It's great. And I'm already going to have to redrip because those wicks are dry. But yeah, the Vortis. Weird. It's a weird little RDA. Not quite as weird as that other one, but it's still a weird little RDA. And I've experiment, been experimenting with, well, I'm going to put these over here and see how that vapes. And like with the top cap, and I'm like, no, now I'm going to put them over here and see how that vapes. What the conclusion I've come to is it makes no fucking difference where you position this cap because your airflow is going to be swirling around from all four sides. So I just put it on and you just vape. It's been good. And they do, like I said, include the little rubbery Vortis blade removal pad so you don't uh, so you don't cut your fingers up, which eh, is kind of important. Obviously, yeah, I'm going to need to spend way, way more time with this Vortis RTA, but let's go over to the Vapor Shark website. These, these are not inexpensive RDAs. The Vortis is $79.99. $79.99, Brrr. features pink insulator, squonk positive pin, chuff cap, 510 drip cap. It is squonk ready, and if I had a squonker, I'd be squonking my little face off, but I don't have a squonker. I need a squonker. Can somebody please in the comments recommend me just a squonker? I want to buy a nice squonker. It doesn't even have to be like DNA 200 or anything like that. Just a nice squonker that will let me... Uh, that will let me squonk in this positive pin of the Vortis. Uh, I've just been dripping with it, have had no leaking issues. Yeah, it works. I mean, it works. It works fine. It's just a weird atomizer. Like I said, it's just a weird atomizer and it's pricey. It's uh, 80 bucks, but they have this revolutionary design creates a vortex of air, maximizes depth of flavor, peak insulators, squawk positive pin, chuff caps, five trend drip tips. You can get yours from uh, Vaporshark.com. I'll post a link in the description if you wish to check it out. If you wish to check it out even further. So the last thing I want to talk about here on the first impressions is uh, two tanks I got. So there's been so much hype around these two tanks. Not even around these two tanks. Around this one tank. So this is the UL Crown tank. And everybody is raving about this tank. And it's Fine. It's not amazing. It's just another freaking sub ohm tank. Now, if this was the first sub ohm tank that ever came out, dude, yeah, I'd be like, this is a revolution. You can fill it from the top or the bottom. This one happens to be in black. I do have a bunch of these to give away, so we're going to be giving away a bunch of these in the future. In fact, I think uh, someone said I'm close to hitting 200,000 subscribers. Maybe for my 200,000th subscriber, we'll do, a, we'll do a big YouTube giveaway. I'll put a big box together with a bunch of crap in it, and I'll throw some of these UWell sub-ohm tanks in there. It vapes fine, but it doesn't vape any better than any other sub ohm tank you know what i mean there's the the the, the sub tank from kanger the sub tank from atlantis the aspire sub tank the hercules the 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 star they all vape exactly like this i don't i just don't see the hype like there was so much hype about this tank and it's here and i'm vaping one and I'm kind of like, yeah, it vapes exactly like my Star used to. It vapes exactly like the Atlantis version 2 does. It's got the same airflow slots as the Atlantis version 2. It looks the same. It's got its own unique coil heads and it does have a top filling system, but so did the Aspire Triton and there wasn't like all this fucking hype around it. I just don't get it. It vapes fine. The flavor's good, but it's not revolutionary in fact I still get a lot of spit back from this and this is the coil head that I didn't even prime I just put it in there I let it sit I did some dry toots and then vaped it and it vaped amazing the cotton gets really saturated and I do get spitty I get spit back juice in my mouth it's nice I mean it's a good tank I'm gonna continue using this tank for a while but I just I guess I was let down because there was so much hype about it. The way that you fill this up is you unscrew the top. And there's been plenty of other sub ohm tanks that you fill from the top. This isn't a revolution. In fact, the Beyond Vape, uh, you know, what was that? The Silo Beast, you filled from the top. You filled it the same way. I do like that this one 
has a very, very wide open filling so that I can grab a glass bottle and fill it up using the dripper. Tanks and glass bottles don't generally tend to get along very well. The, the fill holes are, are really small and this, that, and the other, but this one has a very nice wide open uh, juice filling system so you can fill it up really quick. There's no pressure changing vacuum system or anything on here, which means basically when you unscrew this, it's gonna suck juice right into that coil head. And when you screw it back on, same thing, it's gonna suck juice into that coil head. And every time after I refill it, and this is a Max Fiji juice, this is a 70-30 mix, every time the first couple toots are really syrupy and slurpy because it sucked all that juice in from filling it up. That's when I end up getting the most spit back. That's when I end up drinking the most juice. But I've been rocking it on the Hexome V2, the Grim Army Hexome V2. Uh, 50 watts, I guess. I just adjusted it to taste. I could try turning it up a little bit. Let's see how that goes. Let's turn, let's turn it up a little bit. Still is performing very, very nice. Uh, it's much warmer vape. I actually liked it turned down a little bit. But yeah, it's a fine tank. It's a fine tank. I just don't understand the hype behind it. Maybe, maybe coming up soon, I'm going to have to do another one of those, you know, sub tank sort of shootouts where I, I talk about five or six different sub tanks all at the same time and compare them because there's kind of been a new generation. There's the uh, an upgraded star. There's an upgraded Arctic coming out soon. There's the upgraded Mellow. There's the upgraded iSub, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So I'm going to have to review all these second generation tanks sort of together. Now, one tank alternatively that I have been actually pretty impressed by is the new iSub Apex tank. So it uses this prism airflow technology, which is kind of just a buzzword for top-down airflow in a tank, which is really bizarre. When I first got it, I was looking at it, and I'm like, is that the airflow? The airflow's up here. The airflow is at the top of the tank. How does this not leak? How does this even work? It just does. The airflow goes in, and then down, and then up, and it's kind of amazing. I have not had it leak at all. I have only had delicious vapor and the airflow is a little bit tighter than that than that you know crown tank but i actually kind of really like it and it's much easier to fill all you do is twist you see this top right here watch when i twist this yes the juice flow holes just open right up so you take your bottle and you stick it in there and you squeeze and you can see right there oh look it's filling up Oh look, it's all filling up just like that. Twist it shut just like that. That's it. It doesn't suck juice in. It's not creating a negative vacuum or it's going to pull that juice into your coil head. It's been fantastic. It's a little weird because there's like a double tank system thing going on in here. So there's glass in front of the tank. So you get like this fog kind of in these big holes right here, you get like, it looks hazy. Like it looks like in the winter time when your windows fog up, that's what it looks like. The top one where your airflow is, there's no, it doesn't, that effect doesn't happen only on the bottom ones, which is, it's kind of weird. But this tank, let's see, uh, 0.5 ohm coil, 35 watts, 4.2 volts, pretty standard issue. This is on the, uh, the Joytech Evic VT Mini. This is a fantastic vape. The flavor, the flavor, oh, the flavor is just great in this tank. Very nice, very similar performance to the Uber Hype. I'm just calling the UL Crown Tank the Uber Hype now. Very, very similar performance to the Uber Hype tank, but much, much better flavor. And I don't know if Inakin's just talking out of their ass here with this whole prism airflow flavor technology, but it works. I didn't know what it was. I just got it, filled it up and vaped it. And I was like, wow, this has really shockingly good flavor. And then I looked it up on Inakin and I was like, wow. So they call it, what do they call it on the website? Prism flavor boost. And I'm like, prism flavor boost? 
Prism Flavor Boost, quick and clean top fill, dual adjustable airflow, removable drip tip, 100% stainless steel, Pyrex glass tank, iSub coil compatible, Japanese organic cotton on the inside, no spill coil swap system, 3 mil capacity. 3 mil capacity, yeah, I have been tearing through juice on this pretty hard. 3 mil capacity. Um, I'll post a link in the description to Inokin. You can use your Google Foo to, uh, to check out where they're going to be selling these. Uh, what comes up first? Vaping Cheap, it's 20 bucks. Um, Vapor Trail Channel has a review. Oh no, that's for the... Uh, Oh no, that is for the Apex Sub Ohm tank. They have it on their Facebook, Vaping 360. It looks like it's about looks like it's about 20 bucks no matter where you go. So yeah, it is what it is. And if I'm comparing the Uber Hype, which is a fine tank, to the iSub Apex, which actually kind of brings something new with this new airflow system, I'm gonna side with this with the Inokin iSub Apex. I just, I like it using it more. I think it's a better vape. It suits my style much better than the Uber Hype. That's not to say that the Uber Hype is crummy. I mean, look at that. That looks effing cool on there and it vapes great. This does not look effing cool on there. I just like the way it vapes more. I just like the airflow more and I like the flavor more. Those tanks, those atomizers, that mod, that is my first impression. So yeah, I, I, keep, I keep getting surprised, honestly, because right now I'm like, I have nothing new for next week. I'm not going to have any first impressions next week. That's just what I'm thinking. But chances are I might go to a vape shop and pick something up or I might get something in the mail and throw it on a first impressions. I'm running out of first impressions. I actually need to do some reviews here to get, you know, to get through this list of things. But yeah, uh, first impressions is over with. What do we do after first impressions? It's like I don't even know what I'm doing in my own vlog. What I want to do after first impressions that's right, the glorious return of retro vaping. All right, well, let's do some freaking retro vaping. So what I have for you is a tank. And I don't know exactly when this tank came out, but I do remember doing a review for it. And I can't even remember the name. That's right. That's right. So I'm going to search Google right now. So my original review for this tank came out on May 19th, 2013. And just for fun, let's head over to the website and see if they still sell this tank. Holy crap, they still sell this tank. And holy crap, it's expensive. Expensive. So the tank I'm talking about is the Amp Tank from AvidVapor.com. And you can watch my review for it. And you can watch P. Basardo's review for it. And it's a very, very different review. I personally thoroughly enjoyed this tank. I thought it was the best tank ever. I got this at Vape Bash. Uh, I bought this tank for $90 at Vape Bash 2, Vape Bash 3. I bought this tank Vape Bash 2. I bought this tank at Vape Bash 2 for $90, and I uh, I was pleasantly surprised with my purchase. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Uh, in retrospect, yeah, it's kind of a weird tank. It's kind of a very, very weird tank. So what this tank was designed to do was use a traditional disposable Chinese atomizer on the inside, and then you had airflow coming in there through the bottom, through that tiny little airflow slot, and it would go up and into your atomizer, and then the atomizer fed juice through the two little holes into your atomizer. So, what I'm gonna do is I've got some very retro 12 milligram Namber Juice Grim Army Tobacco Traditional, because that's what I used to vape in this thing, and I'm gonna hook this up. Now, how do I, do I remember even how to do this? I don't think I remember how to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I believe the atomizer goes in through the top. Yep, like that. So the atomizer goes in through the top. There's this top part, and that's where your atomizer goes. Right? Things are coming together. This tank still has moisture in it. <laughs> this tank has been sitting for like four years, and it still has moisture in it. Well, not four years. Okay, two years two years ago and this tank still has moisture in it 
So I'm going to attach the glass onto there and then this filled up. You filled it up like this. You took it, you filled it up like this. Yes, you did. So I'm going to dump a whole bunch of juice in there. That's how you filled up this tank. And then you took this top part and you screwed it into the atomizer. Oh yeah. And you hold the tank and then you screw this into the atomizer just like that. Dude, that is a fully assembled amp tank. Look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that juice flow a little bit. And you do that by holding on to the tank and then adjusting this bottom part up. So the tank's all still together. The glass is still all together. Unlike Phil, mine never came apart. His, he said his came apart too much. Mine never came apart. So what I'm going to do is drip a couple of drops into this atomizer before I vape it. Going to go super retro vaping and use my old favorite green drip tip. I, this came from, uh, I believe that came from Zurich Vapes. So I'm going to drop just a couple drops of juice in here. I want to get the coils wet before I, uh, before I really start cranking away on this. I am dying to see what the atomizer, what this atomizer resistance is. I have a feeling it's gonna be like two ohms, maybe three ohms, maybe more. Look at that, it doesn't even sit flush. It's just up. There's just a big gap there at the bottom. Wow, this is a three ohm coil. So obviously, no, I'm not gonna rock it at 70 watts. I'm probably gonna turn this down to about 10 watts. Maybe even, let's try, uh, let's try 13 watts to start off with. 3 ohm atomizer. 3 ohm atomizer. I can't even believe it. Uh, the airflow is stiff, a little bit slurpy because there's juice traveling into the atomizer. Let's let's try it. Let's retro vape, shall we? Yeah. Dude, we are retro vaping. I remember what I used to do was cover this hole with my finger and then suck some juice into the coils. Oh, just like that. Yep, now I can I can hear the juice in there. I got into a system of where you could take a couple toots, cover the airflow hole, pull some more juice in, take a couple more toots, cover the airflow. It was like this whole this whole system that went into place with vaping this. I freaking love this. In fact, if you go back on my Instagram far enough. I think there's a picture of this tank next to some sushi I was eating at the Casino Fandango in Carson City, Nevada. That's that's my memory. I remember vaping situations, but I can't seem to remember fucking people's names or faces or anything. It's all mouth to lung. And that is a shockingly... Yeah, I mean, the coils look wet-ish. That is a shockingly shockingly good vape it's all mouth to lung and this 12 milligram i get a nice slight little throat hit in there this this flavor this grim army tobacco just brings me back in time this was like this was like my jam it was like my vape i vaped it all the time i filled atomizers with it i filled cardo tanks with it i was a huge tobacco guy and i kind of feel like this uh Grim Army Tobacco holds up pretty well. I mean, surprisingly well. Yeah, that nice little throat hit right there. I can't believe it. I can't believe this still works. I can't believe the flavor I'm getting from it. And I can't believe, I cannot believe how I remembered that this was how you filled it up. That is ridiculous. That is crazy. That is crazy. I feel like I'm in a time machine right now. Need to suck some more juice into there. Anyway, I don't want to vape on this too long. I'm going to wrap up this uh I'm going to wrap up this here retro vaping segment, but that's what I got. That's the vlog for this week. Uh, if you enjoy my vlogs, uh, you're more than welcome to join me every Monday for the Monday double feature, which are my review videos. Otherwise, I'll see you again all next Thursday for hashtag vlog day. One of my favorite things about vlog day is on Instagram, people will take pictures of themselves watching the vlog. They'll be like, 
it's time to have a beer, relax, watch the vlog, dude. I love it. I love it. Nothing makes me happier. So if you want to tag some pictures of yourself watching the vlog and tag me in them, don't just mention me, but actually physically tag me in them, I will come over. I will give you a fist bump and a thumbs up and say cheers. Thank you so much for watching. That's one of my favorite things of all time. But as always, uh, we got plenty of stuff coming up. Uh, a lot of mech mods, RDAs, and tanks because that's what vaping is. Is I'm going to be talking about uh, sub tanks, and I am actually going to try. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about in my head how I'm going to approach doing doing a video about juices uh, without making it sound like like a Namber Juice infomercial. Um, I I, I uh, have a hard time. You know, there's a fine line to walk as far as juices and blah. And it's just a road that I don't really want to go down. But I'm going to try to figure out how to possibly make a juice related video um, I know it's not going to get a, you know a billion views or anything like that but there are some really good juices out there uh, that I would like to talk about and I'm gonna try to do it in a way so that I don't feel like it's just you know a Namber juice or epiclouds or grim cult uh, infomercial you know what I mean I don't like to to push my juices onto people I, people know that they're out there and can purchase them if they want to and I don't like to make it sound like an infomercial, but I'm just I'm just rambling here. So yeah, a lot of tanks, mech mods, and RDAs because that's what vaping is. Uh, I'll see some of you on Monday. If not, I'll see the rest of you back here on Thursday. I am traveling to Vapor Dynasty Expo in Phoenix, Arizona in October. In November, we're going to St. Louis for VPX, and then I'm headed off to Ireland for the Ireland Vape Fest. Could not be more excited. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to make it to VaporCon east uh i really wish i could i can't there's so many people there uh that i would love to see mark from labrat of course cheeksy of course lou of course violet there's so many people that i would love uh love to spend time with it's just not going to happen this year maybe we can uh maybe we can shoot for next year but yeah that's what i got that's what i got for today and as always everybody what am i gonna grab let's grab the uber hype thank you so much for watching let's keep on vaping